Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. Not the Truman Show, the Highfield Show. You can call it the Square Body Show if you want. I call it the, the Seamus Turquoise Show. I call it the 1993 Scream and Look at Me Show. I said, hello, gorgeous. Those Firebirds, are those mismatched rims you got? Oh my gosh, Billy, why would you do that? Why would you do that, Billy? That's, that's sacrilegious. How could a man put different rims on his vehicle? On his delicious looking square body? Huh. Well, if you ask me why, then I'm going to tell you why. Because that's what's available. I got other rims on the side of the house that I had initially. I had them on there. Then I'd uh, burn through that tread. So, you know, as I do burn out, so I put the new tires on and I try to save money when I can, you know? Live better. Walmart, baby. Milwaukee, baby. Ooh, nice looking little magnetic bolt holder I made myself. But yeah, guys, the reason for the season, well, for one, the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? But besides for the reason for our existence, besides for talking about the creator, right? The omniscient, the omnipotent, the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the all-present, right? Omnipresent, baby. We can't be in one place at one time. I can barely multitask. I can barely do two things competently at the same time, right? Like if, if I'm driving and I'm having a really engaging conversation, if the driving gets to a high focus point, like say I got to merge, like conversation stops. Granted, I'm giving my undivided attention to maximize safety and ensure the safe travel of me and all occupants. But besides for that, you know, <laughs> pressing fact, besides for that, um, yeah, I can barely do two things at once. So, my hat, figuratively, because it'd be a little bit of a work to do, my hat is figuratively off to the creator of the universe, who with the simple utterance of a phrase, let there be light, boom. Guys, and this power is continued throughout the Bible. Jesus, when he calmed the storm, you know what he said? The disciples were fearing for their lives. They woke him, right? Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves. Oh, I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because that's powerful. He said, be still. And in, the Bible says, immediately, instantly, the wind and the waves stopped. Instantly. What kind of man do you know that has the power over the wind and the waves? That's what the disciples said, guys. The disciples. Bible, I, I think it's in John. It, 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 you can read in any of the... Uh, any of the um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the first four books of the New Testament, they all recount Jesus' life. Um, there's differences, but, I mean, the, the, the principal things are, are the same. It's not like there's differences like, oh, Jesus did this, or oh, Jesus didn't do this. They just talk about Jesus' life differently. Um, oh, where am I going with this? Bob Saget. Bob Saget. I had a good point, and I forgot it. Dang it. Long story short, my God is a God of power. He's a God of love. He's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of grace. But he is a God of power. Oh, man. There's so many examples of Jesus exhibiting his power. Like, or even... Hey, that's nice truck. How you doing? Um, there's so many examples of the power of God, the power of Jesus. One of my favorites um, is when Moses interacted with the, uh, the magicians, right? When he encountered Pharaoh saying, let my people go. And the Bible says Pharaoh's magicians were able to replicate many of, of oh, I guess not many, but, but several things. Like, like Moses, um, oh, I guess there was multiple signs. No, so it says, so because God gave Moses two signs, right? When he dropped his staff, it would turn into a snake, a serpent, right? And then when he picked it up, it would return back to his staff. And the second sign God gave him was when he put his hand into his cloak, that it would be, it would, when he, and when he pulled it back out, it would be covered in leprosy. And leprosy was a, was a much more common, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a necrifying it, it's a it causes death of a necrosis of, of skin condition it's a disgusting disease it's very contagious so people who had leprosy were like shunned that's why they had communes or communions right way off where the lepers would live because no one else wanted to get it there wasn't a cure so if you had it you're like get out of here buddy go on so yeah um so it was a really big deal when he pulled his hand out and it was covered in leprosy that then he could put his hand back into his cloak and it would be healed. So that was a huge miracle. <laughs> but the, the Bible says that, that like as far as like the, the creating frogs or like there was various other signs and stuff that that God sent 
as a warning, as a precursor to what was going to eventually happen, right? The, the killing of all firstborn sons in Egypt with when the family, okay, long story short, yeah, that, that, that's where Passover comes from, guy. The Passover lamb, they killed the lamb, they, they smeared its blood over the doorstep, and then the angel of death would pass over their homes at night. That's where you get Passover. Um, but right here, back to the point of one of my favorite miracles, uh, and a miracle is anything that occurs outside of our grasp on physical reality, right? Well, I guess it's not really a miracle because I attribute miracles to Jesus. Well, I guess I guess Moses performed a miracle. Okay, all right. I'm blabbering. One of my favorite miracles, and it shows the power. Um, and I was, I was talking about before how it says that, that Pharaoh's magicians were able to replicate like some, um, some of the things that Moses was able to do, right? But when Moses dropped his staff, right, when it turned into a serpent. It says that the magicians did the same thing. So whatever, with whatever black magic, whatever dark arts they were using, they were able to replicate that. But it says that Moses' staff ate. It consumed the other serpents. It killed them. And then Moses was able to pick it up. So it was kind of like God's like, all right, that's cool. I see you guys. Like, and the, and the Bible talks about, like, it's clear. There's fallen angels. The Nephilim, guys, we can get into that talk. If you would like me to talk about the Nephilim and the fallen angels and giants and how they are real, I don't think they still exist to this day. But they 100% did exist. The, the Smithsonian is 100% implicit in a mass cover-up. Um, but, oh, yeah, guys, it's nuts. It's nuts. God is like, you know what? Like, that's cool. You guys got some magic. Here's power. Here's power. But, yeah, guys. Sorry for rambling. I hope this was able to help somebody show you show you a little bit of the reason why I believe right It's not blind faith science takes faith guys and If you don't believe me, you know little of science. You know nothing You are not a learned person and that's not speaking bad upon you That is to motivate you to become a learned person because I used to not be very knowledgeable on a lot of things and I started researching and learning and looking. And I, I, I prayed to God, like, dear God, please give, grant me discernment. Grant me knowledge. Grant me wisdom. And I started having this, this yearning, this urge to learn and to search and to see what out there is real. And guys, don't take my word for it. If somebody ever tells you, I mean, I'm sure I'm still recording. Good. Praise God. If somebody ever tells you, just trust me. Well, just believe me. 